cell is a combination of a row and a column. So if I'm over here, this is cell D2. Simple. That's what I needed. All of, uh, all of you know this much. Okay. Now let's start with the very basics of Excel. What do you think I'll teach? What do you think will be my first topic? Or what do you think I should teach? No idea. I don't know that topic. Mean median. Mean median. I'm not a statistician or a statistics class. <laughs> I'm not going to teach you statistics. Formulas. Okay. You know what is the bread butter in our industry? I have worked in different country and I've been in different educational institutes and different type of companies. You know what we work with? Basic work. Copy paste. Copy. <laughs> <laughs> If you are a working professional, you will happily agree with me. That's what we do. Copy paste. So that has to be the first thing that has to be taught to you how to do a copy paste. You know, and in Excel, it is actually super important how to do a copy paste. Right. So what do you copy paste? How do you copy paste? We have a we have a control key on your keyboard. So if you press control plus C, that helps you to copy. And if you press Control plus V, that helps you to paste. So if I copy, you see the dancing thing is running around the cell, means it has been copied. You go to the destination, you press Control V, it will paste. Simple. If I have a cell, and let's say I have a few things on top of it. I've colored it, I've made it bold, I've added a comment on it. Hello. And if I copy this cell and I paste it somewhere, what will get copy pasted? Only the number? No. Full data means the comment also, the color also, the bold also, everything. Only the number. You guys agree? All of you? Then the whole data will be copied. Everything will be copied. Okay, he's saying no whole data will get copied. Data, okay. Only comments. Okay, let's see. Copy, paste. Everything gets copy pasted. So when you do a normal copy paste, that is Control C and Control V, we are actually copy pasting each and every property of that particular cell, whether it's a color or a font or an alignment or comments or formulas or values. Everything gets copy pasted, right? If I want to do a special paste, like if I only wanted to pick a color or I only wanted to pick a value, then we do a paste special. So we talk about that a little later. What is paste special? So we copy it. If you do a right click, you get an option of paste special. Okay. In paste special, you have a lot of things like paste all that is by default. Means I'll copy paste everything just like a normal copy paste happen. Paste formulas, only the formula portion will get copy pasted. Paste value, only the value will get copy pasted like the number 34. If this 34 is created using a formula, that won't be copy pasted. Paste the formats like your alignments and your uh, coloring and all those gets copy pasted and so and so. So if I want to specially copy paste a certain portion of my Excel cell, I have to use a paste special. This won't pop up until and unless you copy something. If you copy, then only it comes up. What is the shortcut key for this? It is Control plus, not plus, E plus S, Control E S, Alt E S, not Control E S, Alt E S, Alt E S. So if you copy, then you press Alt E S, this thing opens up, and then you can pick and choose what you want to do about it. Fine. Not necessary to take notes. So it's okay. You are looking right, left, right. Why is everybody writing? <laughs> Which school do you guys belong to? The Mart. The Mart. So all TS is basically your pay special. Okay. Lost my yes. 
I've just done data entry with Calcutta Police. Sounds scary though. <laughs> okay, just wanted to get this thing back. Let's move on. Let's say that we have a very small database, and to create this uh, database, I'm going to use a function called rand between. Rand between. What is the role of this function called rand between? It helps us to generate random numbers. Typically, when it is used, when you want to create a dummy data set, like I want to create right now. And uh, in ran between, you have to give the bottom value followed by the top value. What it means is if I want to create random numbers, I have to tell what is uh, in which range do I want to create it. Let's say I want to create something from 1 to 100. So bottom becomes 1, top becomes 100. Simple. So if I say equal to ran between, bottom is 1, top is 100, I get a random number like 87. Okay, now the problem with this rand between is it falls into the category of volatile functions. Volatile functions are what? The functions which keep on changing. With every action that you take in Excel, they keep on refreshing themselves. So whenever you type something, you'll see the number change. You do something, number changes. Anything that you do, number keeps on changing. So if I am creating a random, uh, you know, sample set, I don't want the sample set to keep on moving. I want the sample set I've created. Now it has to be there. So how should I do it? I don't want it to change anymore. If it's number one, it should stay as number one now. What should I do? What should I do? Ma'am, I think instead of using rand between, you can use rand only. Uh, if instead of using rand between, I can use rand only. But again, it's a volatile function that doesn't give. Uh, but the problem with rand function is it gives me decimals. Doesn't give me whole okay. numbers. It depends on what I want, uh, but my question is still, how do I retain 91? I don't want it to move anymore. I want the value 91. That's it. What should I do? Pay special. Yes or no? What do I want to paste? Value. So how do I do it? Copy. I'm going to do a right click or a Alt ES and do values and click OK. And now, whatever you want to do in Excel, you may do it. It's not going to change. Because okay, so that's the reason I taught you pay special. So, yes. so uh, when calculation option, where we can turn it automatic or manual. Yeah. And but why would you want your Excel to be on manual option ever? <laughs> but then you're killing all the other functionality of Excel. So imagine we use Excel so that if I make a change in one place, the entire workbook worksheet can actually should change, but you put it on manual option. So you have to go back. I wanted to make it change now. So I think it's not good. Just for random, I won't do that. Okay, uh, let's start. I don't like this projector. Give me one minute. It's so tiny.
You must be thinking this is worse. No, no, it's fine. It's not fine. How can you say it's fine? You liars. Let's see now. Something has happened to my system. Better. Okay. So now let's start. So let's say if I have the reason I taught you all these things because I'm going to make a dummy data set and I don't want you to feel what is she doing? I don't know. That's why I taught you all those things, but not required for now. Let's say I've got two set of marks, Excel and VBA, of few students. So I'm going to use RAN between 1, 100. And uh, I've selected a lot of cells, but I'm writing in one single cell. What should I press? If I press Enter, the value goes in the one cell that you wrote it in. But if your intention is that all the cells that I've selected, my value should go there, I should press. Somebody was saying, not um, control, control, enter. And enter. control and enter. So when you press control enter, the formula will pass on to all the cells of your selection. Then we are going to copy it and then we are going to do paste special values. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to find the total marks. I've got two columns, one for Excel, one for VBA. I want to find the total marks. How should I find it out? It is simple. How should I find it out? Adding just, plus. just plus sign. Simple. Now, how do you start a function or a formula in Excel? You put equal to sign. This cell plus this cell. Eight plus B and we press enter we get our answer and then what should we do what is drag what is double click what is drag what is drag it is it is copy paste only <laughs> fancy terms but it does the work of copy paste only so when you say drag or you say double click you are actually doing a copy paste so we are saying we want to do copy paste. So what happens in copy paste that we'll see. How do you copy paste? Either you can copy control C, select these cells and paste them, right? Control V, you do this. Or you select, uh, you go to one cell down, press control E. Oh. Why is it not working? Anyways. Or you do a autofill. So you select the cell. When the plus sign becomes the thin one, double click on it. It autofills with the formula. So it's up to you, right? Now autofilling, the way it works, it goes up to whatever is your left column. Till that part, it will fill it up. Right? Now this is done. Now I don't want you to focus on the values. I want you to focus on the formula behind it. So what is the formula that we are using? We said we are using the first cell, the formula of A8 plus B8. What is the formula in the cell below it? Don't work with me, guys. Don't work with me. 
the way if you start working with me then you're focusing on what i'm doing you are replicating it without any understanding of why i'm doing it okay so don't work with me so i'm saying the formula we wrote was a plus bh now you copy paste it what is the formula below there is no sum function i just put a plus sign no sum function what should be the formula below a9 plus b9 you guys agree no you agree you don't why no no one behind you i still need to remember your names i'll do it in one or two classes i'm not able to, could you be a little louder if we will put a9 and b9 the second column will second set will be okay so what do you think it should be what is the formula in this cell in d9 that is a9 plus b9 all of you agree so i if i put a a8 plus b8 next cell would be a9 plus b9 yeah so what is the pattern the pattern is when you talk about a cell let's say you talk about the cell a1 there are always two components of the cell what is that one is column and one is row cell is made of a row and a column because in excel what we have we have columns over here and we have rows over here when you intersect the row or a column we get a cell so there is a row and a column now what is the pattern that you see when you are vertically copy pasting is there a pattern this is a8 plus b8 this is a9 plus b9 this is a10 plus b10 there is a pattern what is the pattern the pattern is that the column is remaining same it's not moving but the rows because we are moving from one row to the next row to the next row the rows are changing so a8 it will become a9 a9 will become a10 a10 will become a11 and so on so correct so when you copy paste vertically columns remains constant rows keep on moving agree okay now let's see what happens when you are going to do a horizontal copy paste because we can copy paste in any direction right so if again i have the formula of a8 plus b8 and i copy paste in this direction means i copied this formula and pasted it in column d what will be my formula now a8 plus b8 same one answer is same you are saying b8 plus c8 others uh, after selecting it should be control e oh okay i'll look into that uh what about this what should be the formula what do you think is the formula is it same or is it b8 plus c8 same okay so two answers how many of you support same ma'am i am also supporting the same b8 plus c8 gagandeep is also supporting the same it has to be same you are supporting it right because you instigated everyone okay how uh, who is supporting b8 plus c8 then which category you are of all five four and two either you have a new answer no guess easy thing yaar yeah. i'm giving you two option put your hand up for one guess what do you think will be right yeah. same would be correct what do you think same devansh same same behind you same so all want to go for the same yeah. okay and some people are saying b8 plus c8 tell me one thing why does even same come to your mind when you copy paste in excel can you ever get the same formula answer is never never if i could have got same the same theory should have been applied over here if i could get same over here when you copy paste you should have got a8 plus b8 why did that change in excel you will never copy paste the same formula ever till you cheat the system how you cheat the system you go in and you say i want this content you are not copy pasting your formulas you copying the content and then saying i want to paste my content over here that's the only time we'll get the same answers otherwise you can never get the same answers because excel is 
works with something called relative reference reference what is relative reference it keeps on changing depending on where you're working right so use the same concept mm -hmm. that you guys used previously now i'm doing is a copy paste in a horizontal direction okay so use the same thing when i'm moving in horizontal direction what remains same row or a column row, row, row. row. so my row should not change so eight should remain eight but where am I moving? I'm moving from one column to the next column to the next column. So A should become B. B should become C. So the new formula would be B8 plus C8. Okay, and you don't have to memorize it, but until and unless you don't know how does Excel work, you can't really make it work to your will. So it's important to understand how will this work. So let's say just, uh, just to show you, it does do that, what we're discussing. Let's say we're going to copy this formula and paste it, right? So this became B8 plus C8. Then it will become C8 plus D8. Then it will become D8 plus E8. Eight remains constant because it's working in the same row. Is it clear? Trust me. This is the basic. This is the first topic, but this is the backbone of Excel. If you guys do not know how to copy paste or what happens when Excel does a copy paste, you will not be able to manipulate Excel at all. So this has to be very clear. When I copy paste vertically, column is constant, row moved. When I copy paste horizontally, row is constant, column moves. Move on. Okay. Uh, what about Dimple, Rajkumar, Nilav? Can I move on? Ajay, Gagandeep, Nisha, Pooja, all good? Yes, ma'am, we can move on. Okay. Uh, let's say we have a grand total also somewhere. Over here, we have a grand total. And the grand total is 200. I've got my total. I want to find what is the percentage I got. Simple formula. What will be the formula? 46 divided by 200. Correct? In 200. Okay. Correct? Enter. Anybody has any objection? Nobody? Ma'am, it's 46 divided by 200. Yeah, it's a correct one. Right, right. 46 into 100 divided by yes, 200. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 23 percent a person has got. What should I do next? For others, other people are also there. What should I do? Copy paste. Okay, I'll do a copy paste. So everybody got 23 percent marks in the class. Pa special paste. Even if you do special paste, what will you be pasting? So what I've done right now is called a hard coding. What do you mean by hard coding? I plugged in the numbers with my hand. I read it's 46. It's 200 and I plugged it in. Good or bad? Super bad. Why is it bad? Because then I can't use Excel. I'm using Excel like a calculator. If you make a mistake in calculator, what do you do? You have to go delete, redo all the stuff again. That's what we are doing over here. So I should not have done this. I should have referred to the cell. How do you refer to a cell? Equal to this cell. And don't write by hand. Refer to it. Divide by 200. Right? C8 divided by G2. Same thing. And in 200, I'll make it. I'll make it look better. Don't worry about that 100. So C8 divided by G2. Now it's good. And to make it a percentage, we can go to the home tab and click on this percentage symbol over here. It converts into percentage. Multiplies by 100, puts a nice percentage symbol also next to it. Now what should I do? Copy paste. Copy paste. I'll copy paste. And what did I get? Divide by zero. I got errors. Why? Right. We understood how does Excel work? Excel, when you copy paste vertically, Excel will keep the column same but changes the row. So eight will become nine. G two will become G three. 
and this becomes C9 to G3. C9, G3, G3 is empty. It gave me a divided by zero error. So it didn't work well. So what do we do? Pay special is not a cure for everything in this world. Coronavirus is pay special. <laughs> this is how it's going. Anything I say, pay special, no, it's not the cure for everything. We? Mom and doubt. Yes. So we, can't we make that uh, G, uh, what is it, G2 or G10 constant? And yes, we can. That would be the best way to do, right? Uh, G is saying, can't we make the G2 constant? And that's what you said. Lock it. Okay. So let's look at what it is all about, what they're talking about. And uh, this is called uh, fixing of the cell. Okay. Fixing. What do you fix? You can fix a column. You can fix a row, you can fix a cell. If I want to fix a column, I put a dollar sign in front of the column. Dollar A1. What did I fix? I fixed A. What is A? A is a column. A dollar one. One is a row. I fix the row, the column is free to move. I put dollar A, dollar one. I fix both row and column. Both are fixed. Okay. So if I want to do fixing, if you want to fix the column, put a dollar sign in front of A. If you want to fix the row, dollar sign in front of one or the row. If you want to fix both, put dollar sign both in front of the row and the column. Clear? Right? Uh, again, we have shortcut keys. The shortcut key to put a dollar sign is F4. So if you have a cell reference equal to this, let's say, and I want to put a dollar sign, if I press F4 once, it puts dollar on both row and column. Press it again, only on the row. Press it again, only on the column. Press it again, it goes away. So don't take pains of going in front of G, front of two and putting dollar sign. Use your F4 key. Now, where should I put a dollar sign in this case? G2. How should I fix it? Fix it completely? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to fix it completely. Press enter. Now let's copy paste. We got the right answer. Clear? Very simple. So whenever you're learning something, there are going to be two parts in learning. One is how and one is why or when we are doing it. So what I have taught you is how now the question is when should you think about a dollar sign when will you think about a dollar sign when i need to fix something and how will you know you have to fix something how will you know oh, i have to fix this thing so either you work like a typical professional who makes error then rectifies the error or you become a little smarter than that so how will you know you have to fix something? How will you know I have to put a dollar sign? The window is like fixed. How the denominator is changing from G2 to G3, then G3 to G4. Uh, when we were doing it initially, it changed because that's the nature of uh, Excel. Wherever you have a cell reference and you copy paste it vertically, it keeps the column as it is and it keeps on moving in the row because you are copy pasting in different rows so that's how excel works yes what you were saying how would you know Trust me, the easier it sounds when you say it like this, it is tougher when you do it in a practical application. If I'm not doing comparison, I should not think about dollar signs. Period. No? With this experiment I do with all my matches. Answer this very tough question. When do you eat food? When you eat food? Yeah. And very constant answers you've got, right? When we are hungry. Right? Nothing 
no chemical reaction is happening in my stomach some growling noise coming hence i eat my food nothing very simple easy to understand when i feel hungry i eat you have to learn in that fashion only nowadays because there is so much information that you have to make it simple to learn so when do we when do we need to put a dollar sign when you said we need to fix something when do you need to fix something when it's moving and when does it move when you do what copy paste so when should i think about a dollar sign when i'm copy pasting because if you're not copy pasting anything nothing is going to change and hence no dollar sign required so whenever we work in excel the first thing is always write the basic formula once you've written the basic formula then before you want to copy paste go back revisit the cells and think what should be fixed for example c8 and don't just inspect one or two you have to inspect the entire formula now in c8 it refers to the total cell are there any other values in total yes where are the caps you get can be only three answers row column cell where are the caps where are the values of total column row or cell it's kept in a column so what should be fixed the column should be fixed so i can go ahead and fix my column c if you talk about g2 g2 refers to this grand total where are the other values of grand total row column cell cell if you say cell both the these things need to be fixed right now nobody cared about c8 why because when you're moving vertically columns don't change as it is so if you put a dollar sign there or if you don't put it it doesn't matter once you know this thing and then you copy paste you will get right answer correct any questions yes do what why do we use control enter not only formulas let's say i've got a bunch of cells i want to write one in all the cells right i want one to be passed to all my selection so i press control enter so if you press simple enter it goes to only one cell whichever is your active cell where you're writing it First, we need to make the selection and then yeah okay any other questions no let's do a small exercise to understand what we learned let's say and you can do it on a piece of paper i really don't need computers for this let's say we have numbers 1 2 3 4 and on the top we have 11 12 13 14 15 if you have computers you can do on computers if you have paper do it on paper don't care so much okay um what i want to do in this thing is i want to create a formula do you need something So what I want you to do is create a formula that when you copy paste the formula to the entire table, it should populate the entire table. Okay, so one formula, not one formula per column, not one formula per row, one formula for the entire table. And what I wish to do is I want over here eleven into one. Okay, in this cell I would want eleven into two. in this cell i would want 11 into 3 and in this cell i would want 11 into 1 again and i multiplication table small tiny multiplication table but right now i'm populating every cell but i want it in such a way that i whatever i have written over here i will be able to copy it paste it for the full table and i'll get my answer do it what should be the answer are you sister of someone at iv that if we have no your face resembles shrila seal and her sister so i was thinking you probably are her third sister who has come no and my most embarrassing was when i told someone i went to zavier's college for a workshop and i Went to a girl and I said, "You know what? You resemble one student, Mim Roy." Then, ma'am, I am Mim Roy. If you forgot me, I am like, "Okay, this is embarrassing."
so guys who are online the way we work uh, online is very simple once you've written the formula you guys are going to copy this formula go to your chat windows and paste the formula and send it to me like i've sent one to you right now okay so use your chat windows to tell me what's going on in your system
So this was Gagandeep has also written online and dollar L3. All of you agree or is there some difference? Yes. Difference? What's a new answer? Okay. So one second. One second. Huh? So you have fixed the L, L3 completely. Okay. So you are saying Hello. dollar or L, what about M2? One second, Ajay. What about M2? Yeah. Nothing in, so it's M2 into dollar L, dollar 3. So what's your name? Saurabh. So you've created formulas for the rows and what did i ask you to do create a formula for table i told you specifically don't give me formulas for the rows or the columns i want for the table so your thing is going to work fine with the row and every row you're going to write a new formula so if i have 100 rows you'll write 100 formulas correct now you don't want to do it that's a different thing but you that's what you're intending to do so no, I'm not going to go for this one. Showing yes. to me. Yeah, Gagandhi, this is fine. I'm actually no screen is showing to me in my uh, computer. Uh, what about others? Can you see my screen? Ajay, Neela. Yes, 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 yeah? yes. We can yeah? see. We can see. Uh, Gagandhi, can you log out and log in once again? Okay, sure, sure. Okay. Any other answers? Or this is the final answer we are taking. Final answer? Yeah? You guys worked on it? Same answer you got? What's your, what are your names? Just let me get your names. Vedant. More. Okay. You are? What's your last name? I call you Mr. Banka. Okay. Sometimes when the first names get difficult, I did not know Marwadi is also starting giving some tough, tough names. Normally, Bengali names I struggle. So I train them to last names. Yeah, Call you Mr. Huh? Yeah, Manav. Oh, don't listen, Mr. Banka. And uh, and you are you are? Ritwik is easy. Okay, Ritwik. So you guys, Ritwik, did you guys work on it? Did you get the same answer? No. You didn't work on it at all. So what is the answer? That's what I'm asking. Um, the should be For what? M or L? This is the same output. The should be constant. Okay. The, uh, that's what that's what it is, right? M dollar two and dollar L three. Same thing, same thing. Right? Okay, let's see. Uh, you didn't understand the formula. At least you, okay, I'll tell you how it worked. What you guys have done is actually correct. Let's see how it worked. Now, when you talk about M2, M2 refers to 11. 
the way to figure out where to put a dollar sign is think about where are the other values so after 11 where will you pick the other values these are the other values where is it sitting in the row two fixed row so ideally what should i do i should go to m2 and fix my and fix the row so i'll make it dollar m2 no m dollar two right now you talk about l3 l3 refers to one what comes uh, comes after one two three four five where are the values kept column what should i fix over here fix the column once you've done with this then you will see you will get the correct answers so if i have this uh, formula and i copy this formula and i paste it across and get the correct answer everywhere and it's always a good idea to go ahead and check And how do you check? How do you go inside a cells formula? Press F2 on your keyboards. F2. When you we are on the cell, press F2. It shows you the formula properly. Neera, did you understand? What is your class timing? 332 530 okay any questions no explain it again sure so um m2 into l3 right m2 is this cell Similar cells, so we have 11, then we want to multiply by 12, then 13, then 14. So it is all in the same row. So wherever I copy paste my formula, I don't want it to go from away from this row. So I'll fix this row so it becomes M dollar 2. Okay. Similarly, 1 and 5 in the same column. Okay, this is one way of doing it. Let's say I'm not able to understand what I'm teaching. You guys are not able to understand what I'm teaching of. This is constant, this is value, and so and so forth. What is the other way around? I'll teach you a crude method of doing it also. What is a crude method of doing it? Very simple. Um, we write the basic formula, this into this. Copy it, paste it one cell down. Check. It's coming as M3 into L4. M3 is uh, M3 is the cell. Should it be M3 or M2? M2 and this is L4. L4 is correct. So this M3 should have been M2. Means two is turning into three. I should stop it. I go back and say I want to put a dollar sign here. Right? Delete this. Try it again. Copy paste M2 into L4. Correct? Okay. Now we are set vertically. Repeat the same exercise. Copy and paste to the right n dollar 2 into m3 and sorry n dollar 2 into m3 n dollar 2 is correct mm -hmm. it had to be 12 but should it be m3 or l3 l3 so l is becoming m and i want to restrict that so i'll go back and put a dollar sign in front of my l okay now your formula is ready in both the directions so whichever way you find easier to understand, do it because, because dollar sign is important in Excel. And this is horizontal. Yes. The, uh, N and L1. N and L1, yes. So in horizontally, yes. So N is this one. So this was correct. The problem was in 1, 2, 3, this, when you move uh, horizontally, L was becoming M. Right, and we don't want it to become M. We still are wanting values from the column L. Hence, we went back and we said we want to put a dollar sign in front of L. Okay, initially we didn't have it over here. So L became M. Okay. All right. Uh, so today uh, we are just going to do some basic stuff because you guys have not downloaded a file. Make sure all of you get into Google Classroom over the week. And download the file so the next time when we meet I can give you some questions to practice otherwise I can't just give time time things and say work on it 
<laughs> you need a there is an excel worksheet that you guys need to download on your systems okay and uh, when you go to google classroom just to give you an idea what it looks like and how to work in it so you guys will be sent an email So you always, uh, I think you guys have given your Gmail IDs over here because we need your Google accounts. Uh, don't email me on this email ID it's to use Google. This is not my ID that I check ever. So just like I would have got a email from my counseling team. Uh, for example, I get an email for co-teach because I'm the teacher. Pop up. Nothing has been sent. Yes. Classroom is empty. Hmm? Classroom, nay, I have to get an invitation to enter my class, which I have not got. That's okay. <laughs> I'll ask them. So you see, like invitation to team teach. This is what a trainer gets. You guys, guys get invitation for uh, something, like to join the classroom, right? So when you open these kind of emails at the bottom, you will see a join button. So once you click on it, you will be able to get into a Google Classroom. Yeah. Now, how does the Google Classroom look like? So my Google Classroom is crowded because I am teaching multiple classes and I've been teaching every month. But in your case, if you accept this invitation, you will have one single classroom. So where you have, I have so many boxes, you will have one box. And on the top, it will be written IV, advanced Excel with the time, like IV Excel with the time and so and so forth. Once you go in some, uh, one Google Classroom, there are the main sections is stream and classwork for you guys there would be one more section for assignments and all now all our work will be put in classwork as a trainer i divide my work into this is going to be a whatsapp group if you click on the whatsapp group there will be a link click on it so that you guys are able to join us on the whatsapp group something in my settings only i think Okay, so WhatsApp group link is given. Other than WhatsApp group, we have assignments. So there will be a section where all the assignments will get posted. Uh, then you will have a section where the videos are getting posted. And then you have class notes. And inside the class note, you will get to see something called a class file. This is the file I'm talking to you. It's not that I will open the old one. Because even I didn't get an invitation yet. <laughs> Okay, now when you download any file from Google Classroom, there's a very standard way of doing it. You right click on it, open in a new window, not a new tab. Open in a new window. As soon as you do that, on the right top, you will get the download button. Download the workbook. Once you've downloaded from the download location, then you open it and then you put your password. Password is IVY underscore 4321. Okay, so next time, do this and uh, then we'll work forward okay so let's continue okay uh what is the use of excel why do you guys want to learn excel don't tell me that it's part of your curriculum hence why are we learning Excel? I don't know if you guys know it because uh, there are some websites on which you can do a lot of freelancing work. And Excel actually amounts to the maximum number of dollars. Excel work in freelancing is the maximum dollars attached to it. Why do we want to learn Excel? What is the purpose? What do you do with Excel? Nothing. Analyze the data. We do reporting, we do analysis of data. Okay, so let's say this is some data set we got. 
we got date cartel customer city sales and cost of goods sold cogs is cost of goods sold i want to do quick analysis of this data so let's put some questions and try to answer those questions how we'll find that out first question is what is the total sales how should i find it out what is my total sales total of all the sales nice twisting of my question some function so we can use a sum function so we can do equal to this plus this plus this yes no the dance you want to do this i will get the answer but do you want me to do this on 1 lakh rows of data yeah. takes a lot of time so what should we do we use a function called sum now when you use a fun sum function what is the purpose of it when you pick a set of cells it should do a summation on that cells and give you an output now how do you select the cells you select the first cell and you have to select the entire column so the fastest way of selecting entire column is with your left hand press control shift and with the right hand press down arrow key the way this thing works control shift down arrow key is it takes you to the last non empty cell so you have the first cell and you have the last cell the other way of doing it would be little longer if you write sum and you press and you use your mouse to go down 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 this is time consuming okay and there are a lot of companies when you go for your interviews they remove the mouse by the way so you have to get used to without being a mouse so how do you select a range select the first cell control shift down arrow key and once you press enter you get the sum of all the sales now the way excel represents it is d5 is to d1379 what is this this is from d5 all the way to 1379 So instead of giving D5 comma D6 comma D7 comma D8 and so on and so forth, it reduces it to the first cell, colon the last cell, and is doing a sum on it. Now, if I pick this formula, and let's say I want to make this change in this formula, I want to put a value of 1000. Do you think it will work or not? Yes. Plus. Plus one thousand. Work or not work? Yeah, are you guys sleepy or I'm boring? It has to be one of the two choices. Because the way you're looking at me, if I look at you, whatever I'm saying, you guys are like <laughs> constant expression, no blinking, nothing, no reactions. you're awake right yeah. <laughs> all of you are awake please answer yes will this work or it will not work it will not work it will not work it will not work okay and what if i temper it in this fashion now will it work or not work not work not so general people say it is not going to work only one warrior is says it will work it will work all the time why would it work check the sum function like if you just type it uh huh you see it uh, the syntax at the back at the bottom correct so when you use a sum function or any other function you have to focus at this part of the function which is called the argument list what do you mean by the argument list if i ask you to do certain calculation you will need some input right i say okay calculate the area of a rectangle you say what is the length and the breadth give that to me i'll calculate it so these are the arguments based on which your function will work now if you read the syntax of the argument do you see a comma there yes so comma is okay in a sum function absolutely yes so what will this do it will do a summation of all the d5 to 1379 plus 1000 same thing it will do over here it will do all the summation of d35 uh, d5 to 1379 plus e100 so it does work 
Now, why is it important to know the syntax? What if you had uh, what do you what if you had uh, like three sheets? Let's say this is a month of Jan, this is a month of Feb, two sheets only, let's say, and there are certain expenses. I'm putting the same expense over here, copy and paste copy and paste okay this is a month of jan these are my expenses this is a month of feb these are my expenses i want to find the total expense how will you find it out some, some. some. Uh, this set of cells yes. then down shift. done control shift down arrow then comma, comma. Go to the previous sheet and control shift down arrow key. So my comma get comes handy. Because what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to add ranges of different sheets. So I need a comma there. Or other way could be you do sum in one sheet, sum in the second sheet, and then you put plus between the two sums, where plus already does a sum. Right? Sum and plus is the same thing. So there was no point of making so many functions to do it. So it's important. So whenever you are looking at a formula function, make sure you understand. Look at the syntax nicely. You will be at a better uh, way of using it. You will have a better way of using it. What if I ask you? What is the average sales? So I use the sum function over here. What is the average sales? There's a function called average. So same thing, equal to average, set of cells, set per cell, control shift down arrow key, and enter. Don't bother about the last bracket. Excel closes it for us. So don't you don't have to come up all the way to close that bracket. Just press enter, it will close it automatically. So average of this range. Clear? So I've got 26,000 is the average sales in this particular data set. What if I want to find out what was the maximum sales? Max, there's a function called max. How do you use it? Equal to max. Same number one, comma number two. So the working is also same. Select the first cell, control shift down arrow key, press enter. I get maximum. What is the opposite of max? Minimum. So there's a function called min to find the minimum value for array. If I want to find out what was the minimum expense in Jan and Feb, can I find it out? Yes. Can anybody volunteer and tell me what is the minimum expense? How do I find it out? Yes. Min. Select the data set. Control shift down arrow key. Comma. Go to the next sheet. Control shift down arrow key. Press enter. I get it. Okay, okay, it works. And um, if I wanted to find out fifth largest sales, then not the largest, fifth largest. Now, no percentile, simple fifth largest. Who is the second tallest guy in this class? Simple like that. Now, what should I use? Any answers? What should I use? Fifth largest sales. Smart thinking. Okay, she's saying let's sort it. Let's arrange highest to lowest and then do one, two, three, four, five. One fifty third largest sales. Now you want to do that? I'll arrange it for you. You want to find one fifty third largest sales according to that method, or you want to do one, two, three, hundred and fifty, hundred and fifty, one, hundred and fifty-two. Probably not, right? 
So sorting and doing is not a good idea. Ma'am, I think we, you can use large function. Very good. There is a function called large. Okay. Now, what are the arguments of this large function? One is array, and one is k. What is an array? Array is a set of cells on which you will find the kth value, and k is a position number. So, if I say I want the fifth largest, k becomes five, and array is what? Array is the set of cells on which you are finding it. So, if I want the fifth largest sales, I write large array is sales. Comma, this is five. Enter. This is my fifth largest. Array, comma five. Simple. Opposite of largest. Small. So there is a function called small. My son, apologies. <laughs> Shrieks like a girl only. And again, in small, you have the same syntax that is a uh, array and a k. Same syntax. It finds the smallest kth value. Now, what if I want to find out the third smallest exponent? How should I find it out? Third smallest exponent. What about Feb? Comma three, comma three, comma Feb, three. comma three, and then we get an error. Why did we get an error? Ma'am, because only one array is allowed, and we have entered too many arrays in this. Very good. Because if you read at the syntax, it says array. It doesn't say number one, comma number two, comma number three, number four, right? Come back. Wait. So it doesn't say number one, comma number two, right? It says array. Now, if you pick this, this is an array. You're done. You can't put a comma and pick another array now. Now it's looking for is a number. So if you're giving an array, comma, 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 then you're making a mistake. So again and again, I'm repeating. Please read the syntax at the bottom. Now, if I want to find out the third smallest of both, what should be the way to do it? And then I'll do it to the other one. And then a question is to find the third smallest in both the months. Not add. You want to yeah, you want to get a consolidated data. So this data along with this data in one array. Then I'll apply my small function. You can't do it like a min function. There's no provision for it. So you'll have to consolidate all the data on which you have to do it once you've consolidated. Now I can put a small function. Array is this one and comma three. 44 is the smallest, third smallest expense. Yeah, not everything will work for all the functions that we have. Next, let's say we want to find out how many cars did I sell? How many cars? Sold. How many cars sold? How many students are present in this class? You will divide what? There should be a data. Yeah, there should be a data. Data is there. Yeah, there should be a data is there. Where you find the average and everything, the data is still there. Remember, I told you this is a data set. We're trying to find quick answers. Okay. That's what we're doing a max min okay. average. I'll use a count function, right? How many cars were sold? We use a count function. Okay, so equal to count. Which column should I count? I've got so many columns. Which one should I count? Anyone? Yeah? No? I feel like doing this to you guys, honestly. Sales, not car type. When it comes to counting, if your columns are complete, you can count any column. Yes or no? 
Yes. Can I count car type? Yes. Who said no? Why no? It's not total sales. How many cars were sold? How does it matter? It was 40 lakhs or 50 lakhs. It's like how many cars were sold? Right? So I pick this, press enter. How many cars are sold? Was zero cars sold? No. Then what happened? Yes. Ma'am, actually, count function works only on the values. Like we have a sales there. So we need to do the count function only on sales. Why did you tell me after the fact this happens? Now he's telling me that count only works on values. It doesn't work on text. It is absolutely correct. This count function counts numeric cells. It does not count text cells. But my answer was not incorrect. I said when you have a table, any column you count, it gives you the right answer. However, this function does not count on text cells. It counts only on numerical cells. Then there is a function called count A. What count it does? It counts non-blank cells. So it may be a text, it may be a number, it doesn't matter. It will count. As long as something is filled in it, it will count that particular cell. So if I put equal to count A, and then I would have picked my car type, now I would have got a right answer of 1375. Now if I want to really work with the count function, what should I do? Pick a sales value, pick cost of goods sold, pick date, anything which is numbers. So if I made it D column, which is sales, how do I got the answer? So if you have a count function, it works on numerical data. If you have count A, it works on the non-blank data. So we are able to find on text also. Okay, what else you want to do? We want to count, we want to find average, we want to find uh, max, max, min. Uh, Ishani, I have one confusing, like we have count A function for counting non-blank cells. Then in mm -hmm. Excel, we have one count blank function as well. Yes. So what that does? So in Excel, there is a function called a count blank. So count A finds non-blank cells. And count blank finds blank cells. So this counts blank cells. So it's right opposite of your count A. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, one more question before we move on. Let's say I've got this data set. And I put a sum function over here. What will be the output? Why is this thing sticking over here? Happy mm -hmm. Women's Day, by the way. I think Excel wants me to get reminded. What will be the output? Error. 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 Why? Because it's blank cell and text. And text. Still want to stick to 18? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Blank is okay. What about text? Still want to stick to 18? <laughs> You're correct. Now, why did that happen? You're absolutely correct in your thought process. If it's a text, it can't get added because I can't add A plus 5. But what happens when you're working with the Excel functions like sum, average, count, all these functions that you've used, these uh, program, these functions have been created in such a way that they have inbuilt algorithms to ignore text and blanks. So if you have a text or your blank cells, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even count them. It only works on the numerical data. So why this information is important when you guys will be working in the industry, you're going to copy paste data, you're going to download data. And when you do that, you will get a mixed bag of data. Okay, sometimes it's going to be all numerical, sometimes it's going to be mixed. So instead of segregating data into text and non-text to do our analysis, we can simply start our work. We don't have to worry about this mixed data. Okay. Now, if I want to find out how many are uh, uh, non-blank cells, how will I find that out? Okay. Number of non-blank cells? Count A. So, how many non-blank cells are there? Count A. 
So and I'll select this and I'll get my answer as six. I want to find out how many number cells are there. Just count Simply count function. So I'm getting the answer of four. How many text cells are there? How many text cells are there? Total. Count total. Yes, count A. Count A. Minus uh, count blank. But count A does not count blank, so I should not subtract it, right? Count A works as to count non blank cells. Minus the count. So count A minus count. So if I put a count A, count A finds all cells mm -hmm. except for the blanks. And minus count function, which only counts numbers. numbers. Okay. So whatever is remaining would be text. Yeah. So two cells. Okay. Clear? Okay. Um, I'm just thinking, should we end the class a little early today? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> First of all, you don't have machines in front of you, so the problem is it's going to be a monologue. I'll keep talking, you will keep keep listening, and very soon, fifty percent is already slept. The remaining fifty percent, which is still alive, will also sleep. So let's do this thing. Let's end the class over here today. Uh, when you come next time, please make sure you have your Google Classroom. You have downloaded the worksheets. And you come to the class. Don't come without the worksheets. Please, please, please. Hi, Isani. Sorry for yeah. Hi, Isani. Sorry for interrupting. Actually, I have logged in into the Google Classroom and don't have this worksheet available over there. Yeah, the sheet is not there right now. The reason being, I am also not a part of Google Classroom. I need an invitation to be there and to upload my sheets. Okay. So I'll okay, get fine. the invitation from my counselors. But another thing Thank is, you. these sheets on which I am working, you will never get it. Yep. It's not that this is a important and very you know useful data. It's a very generic data. The reason is I don't like you to get the sheets I work on because then you will be doing what? Copy paste. Exactly. You guys will be doing copy paste. Whatever I do on the board, you will quickly try to type it and do it. There is no brain work involved in it. It will be your typing speed betterment. No Excel skill in enhancement would be there. So the your sheets are going to be different than mine. So you have a different set of Excel workbook, which I'll tell you, okay, download it, go to this sheet, do this work. So when you meet next time, we make sure you have that uh, worksheet with you. And then I can, once we meet, then we'll start working on the class exercise on dollar signs, which we've already learned. And then I'll take forward from this part. These are basic functions of Excel. We'll continue to learn more functions of Excel and do exercises on it. All right. So enjoy your week. How many of you are working professionals over here? Majority. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, how many years of experience you guys have? No, I'm actually, I'm getting seven years of experience. Seven years of experience, okay. Good. Yes, five. One and a half. Six years. Six years. And what, which background, what industries you guys are coming from? Life science. Banking. HR operations. HR operations. HR. BPO. BPO. Hello. Peers. What do you teach? Power trading. What is that? You share market. No. no. Then what is power trading? So there is another company which is a generating company, and there are the consumers. So we are the middle You said you're a corporate trainer. Yeah. Would you train people on? Because uh, what the job role, uh, what should be the assignment for the DD, business analyst, in software developer? So you would teach them that what should be their job role and how they will work for us. Okay. And you guys are students. What do you study? What did you study? 
which in general, right? like 20 questions I have to play, huh? Electronics. Okay. You're working. I know you guys and you. In geography honors. Good variety of people. You're working. No, my mom's student. Where? Calgary University. My degree master's. In? In student research and control engineering. I feel the pain. <laughs> yes, the person doesn't smile. ISWBM. Yes. Uh, I did my last year, I was working as manager. That's why you don't smile. <laughs> I see, I see, I does that to you guys. Yeah, and now you're still working or you left? Yes, last <laughs> month. Whoever is planning to leave the job, please don't leave it. Okay, bear with it for another couple of months. Then I'll tell you when the right time is. Please don't leave and come to me. It's difficult to place people who are not working. It's easier to place people who are working and transitioning. Don't leave your job. And what about the backbenches? Working with HSBC. HSBC. As what? The work that talk with HSBC. Okay. And? Where? Okay. In HR. In HR. Why? Just asking why. Also, you're managing. I met you, it seems, over there in the counseling room. Okay. I got graduated last year, we take in three I know the pain. <laughs> okay, and you girls are working. You're not working. I'm working, but I'm not active. Are you working in seven? No. I'm working, but I'm not in seven. As? I'm working at ATO in a processing association. Okay. And you are Shivani, I'm not working right now. You're not working. I'm having a, Why? Yeah, ma'am, actually I'm having a seven years experience, but I already left my job on 20, November 2019 due to process ramp. Like I don't like the sound of it. Seven years of experience and left the job now. Why would you? Ma'am, actually the process got the process got ramped down on November 2019, and the company do.